welcome you on behalf of KCG, sir. To all the participants today, today our resource person is Dr. Gaurav Shah. He is a coordinator at Department of Biotechnology, Veer Narmad, South Gujarat University. It's our pleasure to have you at KCG, sir. Thank you. And just to inform you, sir, we are going Facebook Live on the page of KCG. Hand it over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, inviting me. So, uh, uh, good afternoon, all participants. Uh, uh, I, I welcome you. Uh, uh, for this uh, faculty development uh, program organized by Knowledge Consortium of Gujarat. And I thank KCG for uh, providing me a uh, platform and opportunity to interact with you all. So, uh, topic of my today's uh, discussion in this uh, faculty development program of life science is the uh, biology to biological engineering. Uh, 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 I would try to cover some very uh, thought-provoking uh, points and uh, uh, I wish that uh, uh, all of you will uh, understand the basic concept and uh, this is what uh, uh, future may be. And uh, uh, as a biologist or as a life scientist, uh, how much we can contribute for the uh, betterment of uh, society and as a uh, to, towards the world is very important. So, uh, starting my presentation with the uh, very uh, important slide and uh, which all of us are well aware uh, regarding the uh, origin of Earth and the origin of uh, first organism and how we originated. So, evolutionary process is very important for all biologists. Uh, I call it many times life scientists also, uh, whether it may be, whether we are in academics or in uh, uh, research. Uh, finally, we all are biologists and scientists. So, uh, this is very important and, and you all are aware of, uh, regarding this particular aspect. Uh, uh, around it, it originated at around 4.6 billion years uh, first single celled organism bacteria at around 3. Point, if i consider this scale 3.8 or 3.9 billion years ago uh, initially the uh, environment was not uh, as favorable it was anoxic and then slowly uh, oxygenated environment emerged and then uh, it was saturated uh, these are the points where the other life forms also originated. Uh, origin of cyanobacteria. Then at this particular around 2 billion years ago, eukaryotes, and then algae, uh, oxygen uh, saturated. So initially from anaerobic life on the earth, oxygen was dominated and other higher forms were evolved uh, like invertebrates, plants, mammals and humans uh, at this particular point. Uh, this was very important understanding regarding what I am going to uh, present. And uh, still I am I'm working on, on this particular aspect regarding what I am going to present. So uh, uh, I, I hope uh, uh, this will enrich uh, you and uh, many of you might be aware regarding certain aspects which I am going to cover. But this is very important for everyone. It's not about only biologist or life scientist. It's about for everyone. So if we get into this, that same scale, uh, whatever we saw regarding the evolution, it is in a, in a linear way that uh, from this point to this point and we are at this particular. So very lately uh, we evolved right? and, and we are well aware that how, how we um, evolved. It was uh, uh, hominid, uh, Australopithecus, and uh, then the this lineage. So I can say that uh, uh, Homo species, right? We are Homo sapiens sapiens, right? Uh, evolved uh, from uh, one of the species of this uh, uh, Australopithecus, right? 
and uh, which has been shown in this red. Uh, we may say that around uh, 1 million years ago. And from that particular position, the, the most important aspect is, uh, if I, if I uh, narrow down those, those things, then what we are today, since what we were. The, the most important aspect is the uh, cranial uh, capacity, which is measured in the terms of, uh, because I'm talking about human intelligence and I'm going to focus on brain, that what it thinks and where we are right now. So it was uh, this uh, cranial capacity was around uh, 500 cc about 1 million years ago. As I told you earlier that uh, uh, this homo species from which homo sapiens were evolved uh, before 1 million years ago, right? So from that point, uh, uh, initially, uh, uh, because of this size, size, size of the brain was very much important that what we have learned as human beings, which slowly increased as, as we evolved. Right? So uh, 700,000 years ago, uh, it came from 500 cc to 750 to 800 cc. Then uh, from uh, 700,000 to 100,000 years ago, uh, it came around 1150 cc. And then uh, 400 cc and then all these aspects right agriculture revolution and then uh, regarding nutrition and industrialization and this is a modern man so from 500 cc to that is uh, cranial capacity right we have evolved uh, till 500 to 1500 sorry 1500 cc and uh, this makes sense and this is very much uh, important. So this is how uh, it started. If I graphically present this uh, cranial uh, capacity, uh, so it is the interior volume uh, of the skull, right, where the size of the brain fits, and it is directly proportional to the the intelligence, right, and it is how it is calculated. So uh, right now, currently, we may say that we have 1500 uh, cubic centimeter volume uh, cranial capacity. That is how we walk. Uh, the evolution of the humans and uh, as, as we have seen that we have kept ourselves uh, as the most intelligent and highly evolved species. I do have many question marks related to this that are we really that much intelligent enough? Uh, nature has created uh, all of us uh, in an equality. But uh, we are at the top as what we believe and we have prepared that. But it is believed that uh, we have evolved very curious that, that we saw in the previous slide. Uh, and uh, we were motivated to learn about our surroundings and, and those uh, who are curious, they are likely to survive and reproduce better than their less curious and other living forms. And this is the justification what we have given. Uh, to mankind itself that uh, we are highly evolved and most uh, intelligent. So it started with the, uh, the brain, functioning of brain, and the, uh, uh, and the way we have tried to uh, adapt, tried to solve, tried to survive, right? Uh, as we are all biologists, we all are aware uh, regarding survival for the fittest, right? Uh, uh, the most important thing is that uh, struggle for existence and that is what uh, Lamarck's and Darwin's theory said. And still we are struggling. Recent pandemic uh, has made us realize that we, we are in uh, struggle, we are struggling for our existence and we need to make a way out. Uh, so it may be because of our own activities. Uh, this environment has deteriorated, these other life forms are trying to dominate, but still uh, we feel that uh, we are at the topmost of this uh, evolutionary chain and we can control everything. Uh, if I compare the how, how, how far we have reached, uh, this is a very, very uh, basic and fundamental understanding regarding the reasons for human death. 
because I'm going to focus on that and how humans are trying to conquer that. And that is very much important, and that is uh, that is a part of uh, today's uh, delivering my my this lecture from biology to biological engineering. So earlier it was uh, the death mainly were because of famine or either plague, which was considered as black death. We all are aware of it, or war between humans. But that has been drastically changed if you compare the, the present scenario, right? Uh, today we don't observe. See, normally this is in general average, famine. But obviously, deaths have been reported by eating too much. That is an overeating. That is again an irony. Because of the advancement in medical sciences, uh, even microbiology, microbial biotechnology, uh, discovery of antibiotics, and a lot many things we are all aware of it. Uh, so life, average life of human has increased, and now death is not because of as such. Right? Still many diseases are there. Right now we are facing COVID-19, but still uh, the average life has been extended and death is because of old age also. And the most important and most uh, serious thing, I, I told you earlier also that there is a, this is a thought provoking and if you will think that uh, war also do not happen now these days. There is peace treaty throughout the world. Uh, everybody is well aware that uh, it, it will cause harm to any of the countries, right? Uh, there might be at, at some places in a sporadic way, but still, uh, uh, after World War II, right? I, I do. Con I did consider uh, this, this pandemic as World War III. That was war between microbe, that is virus, and the humans. But that is a different part of the story. Uh, nowadays, right? The the very serious case that is death is because of suicide. And uh, I have data. I have references related to that. So it has been replaced from famine, plague, war to overeating, old age, and suicide. So what is the important thing? Now, this is again a data of, uh, it's, it's quite old, eight years back, 2012, uh, but this was the perfect data with reference I was having, so I have tried to incorporate this. So uh, it was estimated in uh, by uh, uh, Global Health uh, Observatory Data Repository, it is reported in that. That in year 2012, uh, total death, human deaths, were approximately 56 million throughout the year. The most important understanding is here, out of that, right, the sum portion, it has been classified that uh, because of human violence, that is either it may be war, uh, two nations are fighting, war between two nations, or a crime inside the nation, right? 0.62 million. And if I classify this to uh, war accounted only 0.12 million and crime was comparatively more in almost every country and the death of humans because of crime was 0.5 million. Against that particular data, the suicide, that is self-destruction, right? Crime is a totally reverse of the, the suicide as such according to my belief, right? That is the self-elimination, 0.8 million died in that particular year. So from 0.6 to 0.8. And the most uh, shocking figures are 1.5 million because of diabetes. Now, I'm trying to relate uh, something very important and, and, and that's why uh, I have uh, presented this data that uh, what actually it is going on. It is it is really a very important and, and a thought provoking that uh, which particular thing harms us. Who is a terrorist in real sense, right? So according to me, according to my interpretation with this particular data, right, you may call it as a table sugar in every household because by some or the other way, there are many factors, right? We are not going into biology of the diabetes, right? Uh, different types of diabetes and reasons related to that. 
but in general understanding of a common man right 1.5 million is a huge number double the number as compared to more than double as compared to the uh, crime so solution uh, biotechnology enables us to defeat death right that was a different part of the story but we need to take care and uh, this defeating death or the thought which came to homo sapiens sapiens regarding defeating death through biotechnology has also simultaneously uh, uh, turned into an unprecedented threat the tools and i i hope everybody all biologists or those who are associated with life sciences will uh, will agree with me the tools that enable doctor to quickly identify and cure new illnesses may also enable armies and terrorists to engineer even more terrible diseases i would not uh, not comment on what happened last year in december 2019 because it is still uh, a debate uh, but uh, bioterrorism is very dangerous which is the negative impact of uh, biotechnology so it is therefore likely that major epidemics or pandemics right earlier it was only epidemic but uh, with recent pandemic i have included that also uh, will continue to endanger human kind and everybody again will agree with this this data this is a two days uh, data regarding the uh, uh, covid uh, global at india level and at gujarat level this will endanger human kind in future only if human kind itself creates them now uh, there is again a question uh, uh, to create right it's a debate regarding this uh, covid 19 so last pandemic as reported in the history was in uh, uh, 100 years back exactly 100 years back in the year 1918 1920 where where antibiotics were not there and uh, uh, there is a data that approximately Uh, it infected 500 million people uh, that was about one third of the world's population at that time uh, and the waves were comparatively four waves of this particular spanish flu uh, and second was second wave was the most dangerous recently after dipavali we do experience the second wave but uh, i hope the government has tried very hard to control them and because of the hard work from the government state government central government and the awareness among people right it's it's finally the responsibility of people uh, we see it seems that it is quite in control and and we have we have now facilities medical facilities vaccination and so many things are there at that time things were very different but still the 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 global death right is around 1.6 million so it was estimated in case of uh, spanish flu as it is presented here the the death were around 17 to 50 million exact data is still not available people are not aware of such aspect so biotechnology if if we uh, in a very uh, generalized way is a clever science of biology and we need to understand this multidisciplinary nature of biotechnology and how this aspect is very much important in fact what humans are thinking after advent of biotechnology so if you focus on this slide and you just recall venn diagram right though we all are biologist i'm talking about those things which we left far behind right venn diagram three circles intersecting with each other if those circles are uh, named a b and c then a union b b union c a union c and then the the central uh, portion is a union b union c so uh, this uh, the main branches suppose biological sciences chemical sciences and engineering sciences uh, represent those circles so if i consider chemical sciences as a circle biological sciences as b and chemical engineering sciences as c then a union b is biochemistry b union c is biological engineering and a union c is chemical engineering 
एंड बायोटेक्नोलॉजी इज ए यूनियन बी यूनियन सी कंप्राइज ऑफ ऑल दिस पर्टिकुलर इंपॉर्टेंट बेसिक फील्ड एज वेल एज बायो केमिस्ट्री बायोलॉजिकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो दिस इज वॉट वेन डायग्राम इज ऑल अबाउट एंड वी एज अ बायोलॉजिस्ट राइट Uh, dealing with this particular circle in which we need to deal with biochemistry some portion and biological engineering right uh, these circles are of uh, different aspect but uh, we need the group of researcher and scientist and academician to understand this this aspect and everybody needs uh, 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 the expert in a respective field so obviously whether it may be plant whether it may be animal or whether may it may be microbial so biotechnology is everywhere you call it as plant biotechnology you call it as animal biotechnology or you may call it as microbial biotechnology which is an application of living system for betterment underline my my words for betterment right it should not be misused and there are chances there are ethical concerns that it might be misused and that is the danger and that is the threat we all humans are facing right now so it's being rightly said after this advent of biotechnology and all things we well we are well aware regarding the latest development in biotechnology and how uh, advantage we have taken from manipulations and exploitations of this um, this lower organisms what we have considered them as a lower organism uh, and that's why this uh, uh, this this line is very much important success breeds ambition so we have we have become more ambitious right uh, i'm i'm very sorry if i if i may go a little bit philosophical but but uh, uh, as i told you that this is a thought provoking right and uh, i have a data i have references and i am still working on it this is very interesting and fascinating subject so and recent achievements are now passing human kind to get into even more daring goals right we we dare things uh, having reduced mortality from starvation disease and violence that what what we saw that the slide was very much important that's why i told you that uh, 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 that is because of famine because of plague and because of violence right um, we have obviously uh, achieved a success in in reducing the because vaccinations are there we are well aware awareness is there though um, uh, still there are many parts in the world uh, which are not uh, getting the correct treatment or the the facilities or medical facility they need but still uh, medical science has uh, 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 has gone so far and lot of r and d is uh, being done and many of the important aspect have been or many of the things are resolved still we are fighting for that so now our main uh, objective uh, we started with uh, aim to through biotechnology and biological engineering in the venn diagram i showed that why biological engineering for all biologists is important not to just overcome old age but even death because we have witnessed many death and 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 we fear that we also might get extinct so this is one of the most important daring go which humans have already human have started already working on it so and that is a trap is it trap again a, a question mark but uh, this is a universal statement which you will you might have heard that human life is the most scared thing in this universe and everybody believes in that right apne gujarati ma kahiye chhe ne bhi aa janam malyo chhe ani kadar kar right ke bhai tu you are not an animal you are a human right you enjoy that life right you are lucky enough that you are not the other any other creature uh, you are a human so everybody agrees even i agrees with that and because of that belief and if some philosopher and thinkers and even research scientist have got into more details regarding that particular aspect and 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 while getting into that more detail again again uh, i'm very sorry if i can if i if i go more philosophical but uh, that is a trap right 
So, uh, universal declaration of human rights adopted by UN after Second World War, it states that the right to life is the humanity's most uh, fundamental uh, value. Right? So, since death, right, now it may be natural death or it may be artificial, we, we have seen through, there are various means, but death is inevitable, we all are aware of it. So, if we relate those uh, sentence and those declarations, right, and our understanding, it violates this right. Uh, death is a crime against humanity and we are in war, total war against it. So modern human consider death as a technical problem. Now, this is very dangerous. And, and that's why this biological engineering came into existence. Now, as we consider it as a technical problem, and if it is technical problem, then every technical problem has a technical solution. So suppose if something is wrong with my heart, fine, pacemaker is there, I can just replace it. Something is wrong with some other part, it can, if it's amputated, fine, there are artificial limbs available, and, and so and so. And there are many other things, I think you might be aware of it. So, in other words, what we are in a in a war to defeat death, and how dangerous it is, time will tell. But in other words, human feels that human needs to be upgraded, right? So, whatever the technical problems are there, uh, there will always be solution. Though uh, we might not have that solution right now, but in future, I, I hope we can get that solution. So, upgradation of humans will follow any of these three paths, either separately or in combination. And those paths are, number first, biological engineering, that is altering or improving our current bodies through organic means. We have seen in that particular Venn diagram and the importance of biotechnology related to that. So that we union C was biological engineering. The next one is cyborg engineering. That is uh, addition or adding non-organic components to our bodies. Now try to understand this. First was organic. Second one was non-organic components to our bodies. And the third one is engineering of non-organic beings, that is using non-organic means to develop human-like artificial intelligence. Now, you know, everyone is well aware regarding the smartphone technology and everything available, right? Uh, yesterday itself, I had an experience with uh, these bots, they call it smart robots, snake bots, right? Uh, a chat, right? In Tata Sky, I just uh, renewed my subscription and I was having some problems. So instead of calling directly to the personnel, right, there was a chat bot, right? Uh, you, you, you post your chat and it is being programmed in such a way. Uh, there are certain other aspects. I'm not a computer man, but uh, 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 certain algorithms are there. And then they will they will try to resolve your query. And I, I was so happy to have an experience a day before uh, I was about to deliver this particular uh, presentation. So uh, things are changing, and uh, uh, humans uh, are taking help. They are creating an artificial in, uh, intelligence has has really created a miracle. But uh, again, a big question mark. It should not go wrong. Right. So this is what. Uh, uh, biological engineering is all about, right? So, if you focus that uh, uh, many of these other fields are related to these aspects. So, this is, a, uh, this is not only, uh, it is a multidisciplinary, right? So, uh, separate entities and, and all these fundamental aspects related to these are very much essential. So, whatever the research has been carried out, right, or, or whatever the research is being done, right? It's, it's, it's not only the individual having a particular degree or particular knowledge about uh, certain uh, maybe chemistry, physics or biology. It's about the team where there are uh, the experts in uh, those multi and interdisciplinary fields. 
and that has resulted into an outcome uh, for or a hope to to win war against that the first one was biological engineering uh, this is an interdisciplinary area focusing on application of engineering principle to analyze biological system and to solve problems right in the interfacing of such systems whether it may be plant animal or microbial with human designed machine structure processes and uh, instrumentation right the term uh, bioengineering was uh, coined in, by british scientist in 1954 uh, wolf right at the national institute of medical research now these are the examples of bioengineering finally why why this medical why 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 saving life because everybody is scared of death everybody wants to live right obviously healthy lifestyle and strong immune system are very much important but still if something goes wrong we have something right the only thing is diagnosis once it is diagnostic uh, it is diagnosed treatment is done right uh, no doubt still we are fighting for uh, uh, treatment of um, some later advanced stage cancer as well as uh, maybe the uh, infection by hiv and currently we are what what we are fighting about regarding this new strain of uh, uh, corona virus right so these are the examples of uh, bioengineering which include artificial limbs knees joints ultrasound mri other medical imaging techniques used engineered organisms for chemical and pharmaceutical manufacturing so that is that is our that is our huge achievement the next and most important thing is cyborg engineering or uh, also known as cybernetic organism right uh, it was coined in 1960 to describe the man machine system in which the control mechanism of the human portion by modified externally by drugs or regulatory devices so that the being can live in an environment different from the normal one so boundaries of humanness are stretched further raising serious ethical questions so it's dr philip kennedy uh, also known as father of cyborgs right uh, he, he he is a very uh, Uh, known person and he created the world first human cyborg from johnny ray right and the possibilities are fascinating and frightening itself uh, this is another example of a cyborg which is kevin warwick he is also identified or he is known as a self guinea pig he experimented on on himself only and uh, he did neurosurgical implantation of a device into his median nerves uh, of his left arm in order to link his nervous system directly to the computer and he got a remarkable achievement uh, uh, after this this is his paper a very important paper uh, uh, you can you can get it from internet and if you wish i can i can share you i will give my contact details at the end of this lecture you can directly contact me or i can give it to kcg also they can share with you along with the assignment which i have already posted so very important paper i will request uh, all participants to uh, make it sure that uh, you just go through that uh, and and it is really thought provoking and uh, and you will you will get a better understanding regarding this uh, uh, cybernetic organisms the another example of the extreme color blindness in 2004 that is neil um, harbison right he is the first human to be described as a cyborg by any government right he he literally implanted this particular antenna inside his skull so the the next is in 2005 in the same way he lost his two arms and now he is uh, a, a world first bionic man so i i included some a few very important example of cyborgs living cyborgs and and it is true now it is fact right so the first uh, woman to have a bionic arm that is uh, claudia michel right uh, and and the, the most important aspect is about this again arm of uh, it is known as b bionic three hand by uh, acland right which can uh, do everything right it has a senses regarding the all types of touch and whatever the things 
uh, which normal hand required right so this is a this is this was the great uh, achievement again uh, a performer artist right uh, that is uh, arkidio right he implanted literally implanted artificially created ear in his uh, left arm right and uh, it was it was really working very well the most important thing a computer chip was implanted in this uh, uh, emily uh, and uh, to prevent this chronic seizures it was that chip was inserted uh, inserted inside the brain so uh, the third one apart from the cyborg is the engineering of non organic beings and we all are aware regarding this aspect uh, currently so computer science information technology and biology they are working using non organic means to develop human like artificial intelligence right and the the most important currently every every everyone is must aware regarding the uh, uh, the work by uh, elon musk right who is the ceo of spacex and tesla is backing a brain computer interface venture this is from his website you can get a venture called as neuralink it is expected that uh, it will out in 2021 so with neuralink musk hopes to develop a micron sized device to help link brains and machines and treat brain injuries and their symptoms such as strokes paralysis alzheimer's disease dementia and even memory loss in the old age see see where where we are going where where this biotechnology biological engineering is is taking us no doubt it has a lot of advantages and this is one of the thrust to live uh, forever right so uh, so what uh, uh, when when we Uh, this is a very important thing right that how how this neural link came into this picture we we saw that uh, uh, the size of the brain what what were our understanding and then what we started thinking the evolution the the brain which was uh, evolved and uh, the humans right now consider themselves as the very intelligent homo sapiens sapiens and what will be the next leap as i as i told you Uh, that uh, that future is about uh, uh, how to uh, defend this particular inevitable death so these are the observation and conclusions right uh, there might be many more things uh, there might be many more inputs related to this particular aspect but the most important observation is the nature's rule that uh, there is uh, a nativity and the elimination right a birth and a death humans are well aware of this particular nature rule uh, 20 to 25 year is a generation time regarding humans are concerned this is an approximate uh, value right an average right as compared to the other life forms and what we have felt right that it is a quite a long period 20 to 25 years just compare with asherichia coli right under all ideal conditions right as a microbiologist i have worked with this microorganisms for uh, two decades and uh, i i know i think um, all of you might be aware regarding the asherichia coli whether you may be from plant science or animal science uh, but uh, they have a very less generation time because of the surface area to volume ratio these are single celled organisms And under all ideal conditions if i say uh, they can divide next generation will be just in 20 minutes in binary fashion so you can get 10 is to 10 10 is to 8 to 10 cells in 24 hours right humans new generation 25 years so now this is a challenge considering the evolutionary process what we have understood through all those fossil studies and what what we have that to chart we have only prepared and there are many missing links in also that but there are proof and and still some uh, new things are coming right because of this uh, science and technology more and more advanced uh, uh, technique for assessment for knowing those things are coming in and uh, we are now near to the perfection we may call it as near to the perfection or very precise it has been known that uh, evolutionary process that is a permanent uh, single mutation takes around 1000 years 
And that's why it took millions of years, right, to evolve, right? Million years from single cell, as we have seen in that first slide, to the current, today what we are. So in technologically competitive world, this process can either be uh, hastened, right? Let, let's make it fast. That is what they mean to say. Or some of the researchers who are working on it. So we should be well aware of it. Or some mutations can be corrected to certain extent. And, and uh, by gene editing techniques, and you are well aware regarding the current Nobel Prize in chemistry, right? Mm -hmm. CRISPR Cas9, we have achieved, and we are, we are moving. So if you if you so this is a jigsaw puzzle, and if you try to focus in all those areas in a very different way, and just try to, it's all about conquering death. We want to live forever. So now we humans are worried about our elimination because we are well aware regarding the nature's rule, and we are witnessing it, and. All these things, this from understanding basic biology, what Robert Hooke, Anthony Van Leeuwen Hooke gave, it was remarkable, single cell, single basic unit of life. And, and then I, I acknowledge the contribution of all those scientists in the last 200 years, we must say 200 years. We are worried about our elimination and such efforts, right, through biotechnology, is just to lessen the probability to get extinct, right? To get eliminated. So, after such huge gap of evolution, right? The biggest evolution in biology, what it has been described in some published literature also, uh, that is the amalgamation, amalgamation of human and machine, that is integration of humans and machines. And if you if you just uh, recall all those things, what I I presented, right? Slowly and steadily, we are trying to pacemakers are there. Everybody is well aware of it. So in future, um, liver may be available, kidneys may be available, all organs may be available. Artificial, they can be cultured. Still, we are not. Uh, 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 to my knowledge, that uh, artificial blood. I think still we have, there are problems related to that, uh, to synthesize artificial blood. Right? But uh, I'm for sure that uh, life scientists are working, might be working on it in, in the, any corner of this particular world. So just imagine the day we will achieve that uh, everything can be done, cultured, artificial in the laboratory, and biotechnology is always there. Right? We need to identify those genes. We need to understand those mutations. Let's make it fast and adapt. Is it not dangerous? Is it going to help? Even I have so many doubts. Right? But as I told you that uh, this is thought provoking. And uh, as a biologist, as a life scientist, as a microbiologist, or as a human, I felt that uh, I should I should share with you all of all this, this, whatever the information I have. You might have more information related to it. I will be very happy that you will be, uh, you share with me all those information. But <coughs> integration of human and machine and how much far. See, we have. You might have seen many uh, science fictions also, right? I am very fond of uh, watching those movies. But uh, uh, finally, we are proving. Uh, it can be possible. So humans have that capacity, human brain has that capacity to make impossible thing possible. So from Homo habilis to Homo erectus to Homo sapiens and uh, next is Homo deus, that is God, right? So, we are trying to become a god or we are trying to play a god after, because we are faithfully trying hard that how our life, average lifespan goes on increasing, how we can defend 
is debt. So everything finally, whatever we are doing right now, will will come to the life and the death. Though there are other cases also, there are other reasons related to that that also I have discussed. Health wise issues are there, but medical sciences, researchers, scientists, biologists, and all those are involved in this multidisciplinary field are are trying very hard uh, so that humans can survive. But we need to understand as a human that we need to consider each and every living organisms equal. We are in an ecosystem. If we disturb that balance, finally it is going to harm us. And this is my one of the most important thing that don't go ahead. Uh, uh, let's take a U-turn, right? So I, I got it from internet. I, I thought that to share with you, but uh, uh, you can't stop evolution. Uh, it is a slow process, but uh, as my previous slide regarding observation and conclusion, right? Uh, some of us are thinking to fast that particular process for betterment, no doubt. See, whatever the Musk is doing is for betterment, right? You can get treatment, you can get cured, and and if, uh, as I told you, that uh, if we believe, we start believing that death is only a technical problem, then human will find the solution and with that uh, these are my references which i have referred to uh, prepare this presentation uh, uh, you can you can get it very easily and uh, you can uh, start uh, thinking on this ground and as as it is a part of faculty development program this is very much important because the generation which we are dealing is comparatively very intelligent very sharp they need direction and uh, obviously uh, uh, this understanding is also very much uh, uh, essential apart from our our conventional uh, expertise in either it may be plant it may be an animal or it may be uh, microbial so uh, uh, that's all. I I, uh, I thank uh, Professor A. U. Patel, advisor uh, KCG and former Vice Chancellor of uh, Gujarat University. I also take this opportunity to thank uh, Professor Anand K. Bhatt, uh, Publication Officer and Coordinator of uh, University Granth Nirman Board. I also uh, thank uh, Ms. Sami Patel, Kushbu Patel and all those supporting team who have coordinated and made this interaction, right? Though it is very difficult, right? But still we have adapted. Uh, teachers are taking now lectures online and they have they have tried their level best. Uh, and, and this is my, my uh, image of uh, when, when I attended faculty development program at KCG five years back. Right. Uh, I'm so happy to be a part of KCG once again, uh, not as a participant, but as a resource person. And I am really obliged and I, I thank uh, uh, participants also. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm just uh, talking uh, in front of all, but I, I hope uh, uh, there was some points to take away. And there were many points to think related to that and uh, uh, soon you will be uh, uh, working on that and and do visit kcg the campus uh, right now i think you lost that uh, advantage of being in a very beautiful campus of uh, kcg uh, because of this uh, pandemic covid 19 so uh, thank you one and all okay sir uh, once again i thank you on behalf of kcg thank you for spending your valuable time and being present at this fdp mm -hmm.